Hi, welcome to Darling Downs Television. Origination point for our three services, Channel 10 Darling Downs, Channel 4 Southern Downs and Northern New South Wales, and Channel 5A, our translator or booster for Toowoomba City. You'll probably begin your tour here in our studio, and it's from here that most of our live transmissions, such as regional news, children's programs, and most commercials originate. We normally have two cameras here, but a third can be added for big productions. The cameraman, or should I say camera person, usually wears earphones and takes directions from the director in the control room above. He or she can track the camera in, out or sideways and use a zoom lens to help compose the picture. You'll notice that many sets used regularly, such as news backdrop or children's session set, are hung on flying battens, as are the lights and can be winched in as necessary. Adjacent to the studio is the prop bay, where products and scenery are stored. Our production crew use the circular staircase for access to the control rooms, but we'll go another way. Before we go upstairs, let's explain briefly how we get the picture out to you. The vision switcher or director selects according to a script or telecast log the next vision or sound that he needs. It may be a variety show or relay from Melbourne, followed by a live studio host or a videotaped commercial break. The picture then leaves here through a microwave dish. It's then in a form that cannot be received at home. 50 miles away at the transmitter site, a similar dish picks up the signals, processes them through our high-powered transmitters to your home receiver. Our Channel 10 tower is on the Bunya Mountains at Mount Mobilan and covers north beyond Kingaroy, west to Miles and south to around Milmerran. Channel 4 is located on the granite belt near Applethorpe and covers south beyond Tenterfield, north to Allera and west to Gundawindi. Incidentally, the large tower next to the studio building is a telecom installation and has nothing directly to do with the station. Our link dishes are on a link tower near the northern entrance to the building. Now let's go upstairs. I guess you could call this the nerve centre. All on-air programs are switched at this desk. Our on-air switcher has a telecast log with timed details of all programs, commercials, segments and station IDs to go to air during that session. He has remote control buttons which allow him to stop and start film projectors, change slides or stop and start videotapes. This rather confusing switcher has two buttons for every program source, one for picture and one for sound. Monitors allow him to preview each source before selecting to air. Split second timing is part of his job, particularly important when a program is selected on relay from another place such as Brisbane, Sydney or Melbourne. In most cases we relay the program but insert our own commercials locally. He must communicate with the originating station to ensure that our commercial break exactly coincides with theirs. The two main sources of program material apart from relays of live shows are videotape and film and that's where machines such as these come into action. Most American programs and movies made originally for theatres come to us on film and are loaded on this machine. Three diodes or transistors, one each for red, green and blue, scan the film and the electronics in the cabinet convert the image to electrical signals. As television gear is highly specialised, very little is manufactured in Australia. This machine comes from Bosch Fernse of Germany, while other suppliers are Japan, Britain and American. Next is another standby telecine chain as a backup, which also can show 35mm colour slides. All Australian programmes, and most British, come to us on two-inch videotape. Quality of tape is generally very high, and tape has the advantage that it cannot scratch like film, and tape can be reused many times. These two machines play back most of our tape's programs, while this cartridge videotape machine plays back short segments, commercials, promos, and IDs. Worth about a quarter of a million dollars, this is actually two machines in one. It uses the same sort of two-inch tape, but spooled off onto short cartridges. These can be loaded in any order and the machine programmed to replay in a selected order. While one cartridge is on air, the second is being queued and starts automatically at the end of the previous spot. If you walk past the machine while a commercial break is going through, you'll hear the machine loading and re-spooling. Commercials are the lifeblood of a television station. Without them, we wouldn't be here. And a station such as ours derives almost all of its revenue to pay staff and buy programs from the sale of airtime. In our case, 60 to 70% of that revenue is derived from the nationals, selling everything from soap, soup to cornflakes. Now, most of these commercials are produced by advertising agencies in Sydney or Melbourne, but the all-important local commercials are made right here. This switcher is similar to the one used to put programs to air, but it has a lot more special effects. Let's show you some. By cutting from one button to the other, we can cut from one source to another. 
A softer effect can be achieved with a fader to create a dissolve. One special effect is a wipe. We have a big selection of wipes. Here are some. Here's a bit of video magic I like. We call it chroma key. Put someone in the studio against a plain blue background. We can also use red or green, the primary colors for TV. And we can insert a different background from film, videotape, and other camera to create a special effect. Next door is the audio control room, where the audio operator follows the director and selects the appropriate sound source, or adds music or sound effects. The main studio control room has its own pair of videotape machines. They work on the same principle as the ones used for on-air programming and utilize two-inch tape. As they're later models, they have facilities for precision editing of programming and commercials. This little keyboard allows us to create titles and graphics without the use of artwork. Stored on floppy disks are a number of typefaces which we use for captions. These can be colored with drop shadows and many other features and can be made to roll or crawl. Many of the things we wish to cover happen outside. And in the last few years since the advent of color TV in this country, a revolution has occurred in so-called backpack cameras. These cameras are operated by battery or power and each year new models are being released that are smaller and lighter. For major outside telecasts, such as the Carnival of Flowers Parade, where a number of cameras are used, we roll out the OB van. It's like a miniature TV studio on wheels with a control room, audio and vision mixers, videotape to record for later replay, and even links so that live programs may be beamed back to the studio. But for smaller jobs where only one camera is needed and speed is important, such as local news gathering, the backpack cameras and portable videotape machines are used. In fact, there's a new word coined. ENG for electronic news gathering to show the difference between tape and film. ENG is fairly new in the world and we're proud to say that we were the very first station to use it in Australia a full 18 months before Metropolitan channels switched from film. Tape of course needs no processing so is available virtually for instant replay. The news department have their own scaled down edit desk to compile and shorten news stories prior to telecast. I hope this guide has helped you understand what you see while you're on your tour here. And if yours is a daytime trip, perhaps you'd like to spend some time in the 1045A park right next door. Thank you for coming and thank you for watching 1045A.